you doing? This is Brother Q again. We're coming back for a part two of self-sufficiency, self-reliance. I just want to raise a question. Why not separate? All right, here we go. Now, in the midst of all this racial unrest, unfair taxes, some people have issues with uh, president, vaccines, uh, mandatory vaccines. I, for a long time, have been an advocate of moving out of these municipalities, being on our own land, growing our own food, raising our own livestock. That way you know what's GMO, what's not GMO, because you raised it, you grew it, you cooked it. You know, I've been an advocate of homeschooling our children. How many more things have to happen to us? How many more things have to be forced on us before we realize maybe it's just time to go? How much different would our lives be if we just left? You know, I recently did my Buzzard Gulch series and I explained what is going on in the municipalities, then in self-sufficiency, self-reliance. We talked about, well, what it could be, you know, to get out of the municipalities, to get out of the cities. Now, some people think that when you say that, you mean go in the middle of the woods and live like Grizzly Adams or something. No, not necessarily that. Think about your grandparents. You know, they had a an acre of land, two, three, four, five acres of land in the country. They had a house on it. You could put a trailer on it, whatever. Okay? Now, if you work on the same job, you save money and different things. You also have more freedom to do what it is you want to do. So my question is, what is it that you want to do? If you're on your own land and you live around people who live on their own land and they think like you and act like you, you can barter amongst each other. So it's not necessarily about money so much because if you raise collard greens and I raise chickens or I grow corn and, and you hunt, we can barter amongst each other and we can live pretty good. There is a portion of self-governance that comes to the forefront that forces us to look at the fact that maybe we don't need the police. Maybe we don't need local, federal, you know, state governments. Maybe we just don't need their participation in our lives. Maybe we don't want it. Now, the thing about it, I'm not saying be anti-government or overthrow the government or anything like that. But when you were a youngster and you lived in your parents' house, you had to abide by their rules or they would always tell you, hey, look, anytime you want to leave, you can leave. Well, I think of this in the same kind of way because in a lot of ways, forced vaccines, little tricky laws and things that they have to extract revenue out of you to put you in a lower status than you were born or created to ever be in or live in. Maybe it's just time to be self-sufficient, self-reliant on your own land. What would that look like in this day and age? And how much would it cost? How much would you save? Would you save by giving up weave and fake nails? And trips to the beauty salon and pedicures and do your own stuff like we used to do back in the days. To the brothers that go to the barbershop that get a fresh cut every week and get your beard trimmed up. How much would you save and be able to put back into yourself and your own life and your own family and invest in your own children? What about different stocks and bonds and crypto and different things like that that you can invest in your children? What about purchasing not just land for yourself? to live on, but purchasing land, an acre or two, for your children now, while they're teenagers, before they get out of college, before they get out of high school even. Teach them about money. It's so funny that we grow up and we're taught about religion and 
the Bible and all the stories. And we see all every holiday, we see the stories about what happened to slaves and Kunta Kinte and all this kind of stuff. Nobody teaches us about money. Nobody teaches us about self-reliance. Nobody speaks about separatism. Separatism doesn't mean that you hate anyone. I'm not saying hate anyone. I don't hate anyone. I just don't like it when people don't treat me the way that I feel that I should be treated. So therefore, if you're in an abusive relationship, maybe you should think about getting out. Or even when you have the thoughts that maybe you should get out, it's already past the time where you should have gotten out. But go ahead and make preparations and get out anyway. Even in light of the black militia, NFAC, Grandmaster Jay, and what has happened in the recent days with his arrest, we know it's nonsense. We know it's unfair. But that is just another version of Buzzard Gulch. So I just wanted to raise some thoughts and have you think about the fact, remember, This is about self-sufficiency, self-reliance. I think we need to go in and itemize and really look. When you're thinking about coming out of the city to travel across the country, that's not what I'm saying. What about in in the states and cities that you live in? How much would it be to move outside the municipalities and stay in the areas where you are? Being that it used to be a problem to try to homeschool your children. The whole nation is basically homeschooling now. So this is a perfect time for you to pull out. And then there is that question of forced vaccinations. If you are within the municipalities and you are forced to do such a thing, how will you make a living? Maybe it's time to just cut your losses and not necessarily just run, but it's time to think about personal and family preservation. Think about those things and hit me up. Let me know what you think. All right, this is Brother Q. I think I'm coming back for a third part of self-sufficiency and self-reliance. I'm going to think about it. You guys have a good one. Peace.